for some of my healing medicine? Oh, you want to hear a story, do you? Well, let me tell you a story about Horton the Elephant and how he saved the hoose. Our story takes place a long time ago in a jungle called Newell. Now, when Horton was born, his mother died in childbirth. And Horton's father, he did not stick around. We all know that the male elephants, they don't stay with us, not the way it is with our humans and our tribes. So when Horton was very young, he had no mother, and his father was not around. Despite this, Horton was a kind elephant. He lived to himself. He did things for the good of the tribe. So, when Horton was very young, all the animals in the jungle coexisted peacefully. They had their quarrels and their tussles, but for the most part, everyone got along. But then the monkeys came. Everyone knows that the monkeys are the most greedy and malicious of all the animals. They wanted the watering hole to themselves. The elephants, they stayed at the watering hole for a long time, but they grew tired of the monkeys hurting and pestering them. So they left. Now Horton, when the other elephants left, he was old enough to care for himself. So he stayed. Life was hard for Horton after they left. His only friends were a young kangaroo named Joy and a young chimpanzee named Alfred. Now, Horton, he wanted all the animals to be able to drink. But the monkeys, they would try to turn him away. Every day he came to the watering hole, and the monkeys, they were throwing things at him and calling him names. Our Horton, he was big. But he was no fighter. He would stay at the watering hole, quietly repeating the words, a person is a person, no matter how small. Our story begins with Horton walking home from the watering hole to a small grove of boab trees where he lived. On his way back, he noticed something curious, something that caught his attention. Yo! What? Who said that? Where? A speck? <coughs> How can a speck be talking? I suppose there must be some very small people in there. I will help you, little people. Let me just place you on this clover. <laughs> hey, Horton, where are you headed? Oh. No, I'm sorry, Horton, but you know that the monkeys and elephants can't be friends. It would be weird, and the others, they wouldn't allow it. I guess. I wish the monkeys didn't have to leave. You should have told the elders to be nicer to them. Yeah, I guess so. Do, do you miss them? Yeah, I guess so. But 
I was old enough to have been for myself, so it's okay. I'll always be on your side, Horton. Uh, oh, okay, oh, quick, run. The other side of the watering hole. The rest of the monkeys are coming. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess it is weird that an elephant is still here. What? No, I don't know him. I've never even met him before. Yeah, elephant, you heard them get out of here. Can't you tell that you aren't wanted here? I thought all of, the, all of the monkeys were still at the watering hole. I'm, I'm just on my way home. Why did you follow me? Just wanted to make sure you weren't up to anything. Why do you have that clover in your trunk? Uh, on this clover is a, a speck with tiny people. <coughs> but really, what is it? <laughs> well, you're joking, right? You meant what I said. Said what I meant. Yeah, yeah, elephants are faithful. I've heard it before. How could there be people on that tiny speck? Just listen. You can hear them talking. <gasps> what are they saying? I mean, I didn't hear nothing. And you know what? Even if there were people on there, they would be worthless. I know why you're pretending you can't hear them. You just don't want the other monkeys to make fun of you. Oh, yeah? Well, to me, they're nothing anyway. And maybe the other monkeys would be right to make fun of me. Just, just get out of here. I'm sick of looking at that speck of yours. All right. Go on. <sighs> Sorry about Alfred. He's not the best of being understanding. It's no trouble. What is your name? And thank you for saving us, kind sir. You're very welcome. My name is Horton. And yours? We are the Who's, and I am their mayor. I speak for the Who's. Oh, I see. So, how did you end up on a speck? What do you mean? We've always been on this speck. You might as well ask how you ended up in the place you are. Oh. Well, what is it like on your speck? Well, it's a lot like your jungle. We have kids, and parents, and teachers, and leaders, and doctors. Believe it or not, I just had my first child today. Wow. Oh. It's hard to imagine all of that when I'm just looking at this clover. So, why did you cry out to me? How did you end up almost floating into the water? Well, for a long, long time, our speck was safely perched atop a rock, and that rock was on top of a mountain. Then a wild storm swept in, and a bolt of lightning hit our rock. There was a panic because for the first time in our history, our speck was in danger. The call you heard was our people in distress. Thank you for helping us, Horton, for helping my children. I know. Can you believe Alfred would do that? It was scared. At least I know I'm. Mean. I, at least I know you're on my side, Joey. Hi, my name is Horton. What's your name? Sure, I'd love to be best friends. <laughs> I've never been friends with a kangaroo before. Come on, Joey, let's go to the climbing rock. I love climbing up, but my favorite part is when I fall back down. <laughs> I know you're a kangaroo, but I also know you're faster than that. Hurry up! <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd love this place. It's pretty cool, huh? Come on, Joey. You're never too old for this. No, no, Joey, it's, it's not childish. And, and so what if it is? I don't know why you care so much about it. All the other animals think. Yeah, no, I get it. They want you to hang out with them, and they don't want me to come along. That, that's okay. We'll, we'll hang out some other time. Hmm. 
important. Look, we need to talk about this spec. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. The who's are real, and, and nothing you can say will make me think they're not. Important. This is not about whether they are real or not real. This is about your reputation. This is about how this looks on me, on our community. I mean, I already feel awkward as it is hanging out with you. It's not all about you, Horton. Get it. Hey, Horton. What? Thank you. You're welcome. It's just, why can't any of the other animals hear you? They can. You saw how that one monkey, Alfred, reacted at first. It's kind of like this. You remember when you were little and your mother would yell down the stairs for you to clean your room? And you knew you could hear her, but you really didn't want to, so you sort of convinced yourself you couldn't? What are stairs? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. The point is, the other animals don't hear us because they don't want to hear us. It's easier for them to go on living their lives. Oh. Okay. I guess that makes sense. right here when we went to talk. You said it would be safe here. Horton, look, I'm doing this for your own good. I had one of my mites take the speck to a field of clovers and just drop it in. That way, if they are real, they can just continue their sad little existence in their clover field. I mean, honestly, Horton, they're smaller than insects. You don't feel bad about swatting a fly with that tail of yours, do you? If you carry on with this whole taking care of them nonsense, people are going to think you're crazy. Okay. I'm going after them. Horton, look, I'm sure they're perfectly safe. Just trust me. No! Joey, they're not. Someone could... Someone could eat their... Somebody could eat their clover. Someone could step on them. Anything could happen. Going after them. You're all right. Then, here, drink this. No, Joey, there isn't time for that. Come on, it'll help you keep up your strength. Oh, all right. Fine. Thanks. All right. I'm going after them. Who's better be all right? Joy gave to Horton, most certainly did not keep up his strength. You see, Joey, he did not want Horton to find the speck. Joey was used to his life in a certain way that he did not want for that to change. So Joey concocted a drink from the cat flower, a most powerful drug. After drinking it, and fell into a deep sleep. What is this place? Where am I? How did I get here? It's a boy. He's beautiful. 
I'll be back in one sec, love. I need to speak with Horton. Me? What do you mean? We've always been on this spec. You might as well ask how you ended up in the place you are. Well, it's a lot like your jungle. We have kids and parents and teachers and leaders and doctors. Believe it or not, I just had my first child today. The who's need my help? What am I doing but lying here drugged? <laughs> Show me. Oh. How would you do this? Better than this. I'm going to find you. How will I ever search this entire clover field? Hello? <coughs> what are you doing here, Horton? Looking for your little friends? Hello? Where are you? Just give it up, Horton. Why do you care so much? I'm sorry, Albert, but I can't do that. Hello? Horton, we are here. <sighs> Thank God. I thought I'd lost you. Is everyone down there all right? Yes, we are all fine. Just some damage to our building, but nothing that can't be fixed. Thank you, Horton. Now, this next beat gets a little hectic. <laughs> All the animals were growing tired of Horton's antics with the speck. So, Joey turned his back on Horton and joined Alfred and the rest of the other monkeys. The elders got the whole tribe of monkeys and quietly crept up on Horton whilst he slept. He awoke to the feeling of coarse rope scratching against his skin. They netted him, roped him, and threw him in a cage. In front of the cage, they built a huge roaring fire to burn the speck. We find Horton in the cage, with the fire in front of him, and the speck in the hands of Alfred. Don't do this. Joey, please. I know you heard them. I never heard. Um, it's all in your head, Horton. Joey. Please, you are my friend. You know this is wrong. Joey, don't do this. Joey! Joey! Just shut up, Horton. You know it's over. Once this is over, you'll be just like us. We can't have freaks running around crazy, making us look like fools. It'll be okay. Once the speck is burned, we can all go back to our normal lives. Please, just listen to them. Just give them some time. Why should we give them time? Why should we give them, why should we do what you say? Well, well I, I can't prove it to you, but, but they can. Please, just see more time. You know, um, maybe he's right. We should wait on this. Let Horton sit in his cage for the night to think it over. We'll deal with him in the morning. So long as the elders are not opposed to this, all right, it's settled then. Alfred? What are you doing? 
I wanted to talk to you, Horton. I wanted to ask you something. That's why I convinced the elders to delay this. Why are you doing this? Trying to save this spec, I mean. What's in it for you? In it for me? This isn't about me. This is about the Who's. They don't deserve to die. So why do we all act like we can't hear them? If they're so great, why does everyone hate them? And the Who's once told me that, that no one can hear them because well, no one wants to hear them. You didn't want to hear them. It's easier to just close our minds and keep living our lives. Our minds are so close to the idea of them being real that they, that they are real to us. So then how come you could hear them? What's so special about you? I'm not special. I'm just lucky. If anyone is special, it's the Who's. Perhaps. You know, Alfred, you have a choice here. You know they're real. You know they're people. You can either stand up for them, or you can be a coward. You keep living your life in the dark. You know that whatever you choose, you'll never forget this moment. How do you do it, Horton? How do you get up each day and fight for something that doesn't benefit you at all? How do you endure it all? Well, I guess it's worth it to me knowing that my actions might be saving the lives of others. You know, I still remember what I did to you when we were little, when I shouted at you and drove you out of the watering hole. So do I. But that's in the past. This is now. This isn't just about the elders anymore. It's a matter of life and death. Here, let me open the cage. Your speck is over there in that tree stump. And Horton, I'm, I'm sorry for everything. I forgive you. I'm sure the Who's do as well. What will I tell the other monkeys? Oh, I feel trapped. I'm scared, Horton. I will stay here with you. We'll stand up to them together. We'll wait here till morning. Hey, he's out of his cage. Get the elders. How could he have escaped? Horton, give us the spec. I let him out. I listened to him, and I realized he was right. And you all should listen to him, too. Well, well first of all, if you want to hurt Alfred, you're going to have to hurt me, too. And, and second of all, you all need to hear the truth. And the truth is, there are people on this spec, and you all know it. You just you don't want to open your eyes to see the truth. Dale, listen to him. He's deceiving you. There are no people on that spec. Joey? What happened to you? We used to be friends. Can't you see that this is real? That these people deserve to live? What happened to me? More like what happened to you. You're so blinded by you need to save people. There are no people to be saved. There's no need for change. Well, I pity you, Joey. Sorry you can't see the truth. But no matter what you say, no matter where I go, I will stand up for these people. Because the truth is, a person is a person, no matter how small. was not only Horton, but also Alfred who stood up for the speck. Now, 
As for Alfred, he was first shunned from the tribe, but he was able to change their minds. Slowly, he worked his way back into the tribe, and then he worked his way up. Soon he found himself the leader of the whole tribe of monkeys. The monkeys realized that a leader should have the courage to stand up for those who are weak. Now, as for Joy, the kangaroo, he soon realized the error of his ways. He had betrayed his friend, he had not stood up for the hoose. Now, Horton was driven to exile because when he was first released, the monkeys were still out for his blood. So Horton went on the run. Alfred, weirded with guilt, searched the land for him. He wanted to apologize. He felt as though he could just say sorry. Then his hands would be clean and all would be forgiven. For he never did find Horton. And he lived the rest of his life in misery. So, children, I hope that your minds have been opened and your eyes are clearer now to see the truth. I know that when we have power, we must not abuse it. We must use it for good, like Horton. And when there is evil, we must not sit by and watch. We must stand up and act. For sitting by and watching evil happen, the bad is doing the evil itself. Well, Thank you for listening to an old witch doctor's rant. Thank you. Good night. I was planning on doing Atticus Finch, and I talked with my girlfriend uh, about it, and she I gave me the idea had, of doing Horton. Um, and I was like, oh, that's a really cool idea. I love Dr. Seuss, and Horton portrays my statement a lot better. Um, so I chose Horton. But I decided that if I included the sign, I wanted to make him more of a main character. Oh, yes, yeah. My favorite part was acting out the witch doctor, actually. He's really cool. Okay, one second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I think so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um so with most of your characters being animals, you said you watched a bunch of animal videos, but you also, you know, you had to have some kind of human characteristics with all your movement and stuff. So how did you decide to draw the line between the human characteristics you gave the animals and the animal characteristics you brought to your human movement? Um, that was actually fairly challenging. Um, I had some people ask me, like, oh, why don't you just make the animals into humans and just have it be about human beings? Um, but I didn't really like the idea of that because I felt like it changed the story a lot. Um, so I guess I just spent a lot of time experimenting with more or less exaggeration with movement. Um, and I guess for Horton, I kind of had some of my own personal traits that I do. Um, and then with Joey, I uh, spent a lot of time in the characterization day on Joey. Um, but yeah, that was I'm not even sure if I actually answered the question. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to move into the last show of the evening, and that is um, Jake's show. Before we do that, though, reminders, that's the entrance, that's the exit. And after Jake's show, we will have a, a discussion conversation with the entire group. Oh, show? I don't know.
restrictions so I can just write whatever I want and then I was like okay all I have is like this really small framework so then I ended up having to write like a ton of stuff and it was way harder than I thought it was going to be so <laughs> writing was a challenge so Andrew Courtney Ellison is a really really interesting character choice and at the end of say junior year or before did you think you were going to do Horton? <laughs> I had no clue what I was going to do for my show at the end of junior year I came in, we were all saying we were going to do our shows, and I had totally forgotten that we were doing this today. So it came to my turn, and I was like, oh, uh, I'll probably do Gandhi and Mandela. <laughs> and obviously, I didn't do either of those characters. Um, and then, actually, the night before we was due to decide who our characters were going to be for the show, um, I was planning on doing Atticus Finch, and I talked with my girlfriend about it, and she gave me the idea of doing the Horton. And I was like, oh, that's a really cool idea. I love Dr. Seuss, and Courtney portrays my statement a lot better. Um, so I chose Courtney. One last question. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Um, What was your favorite part of the process? Uh, my favorite part was acting out the witch doctor, actually. He's really cool. Okay, one. <laughs> Uh, uh, is it a good one? <laughs> 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 okay. Go ahead. Okay, so, um, so with most of your characters being animals, you said you watched like animal videos, but you also you know, you had to have some kind of human characteristics with all your movements and stuff. So how did you decide to draw the line between the human characteristics you gave the animals and the animal characteristics you brought to your human movements? Um, that was actually fairly challenging. Um, I had some people ask me, like, oh, why don't you just make the animals into humans and just have it be about human needs? Um, but I didn't really like the idea of that because I felt like it changed the story a lot. Um, so I guess I just spent a lot of time experimenting with more or less exaggeration with movement. Um, and I guess for Horton, I kind of had some of my own personal traits that I do. Um, and then with Joey, I uh, spent a lot of time in the characterization day on Joey. Um, but yeah, that was, I'm not even sure if I actually answered the question. <laughs> <laughs>